All right, guys. Uh, so as we had our introduction, remember we had the introduction of our exponential equations working with uh, exponential equations. Uh, this is one of the most important uh, topics. These are like, it's a combination of two things. You've got exponents and also equations. Meaning to say we are supposed to know the basics of our equations and also the basics of our exponents, all right? So like I said, this is just a follow-up exercise. Uh, solve for X on these questions. We have got uh, one or two questions that we are going to consider. Uh, let us see question number one, whereby we are given uh, three to the exponent of X minus, uh, three to the exponent of X minus two is equivalent or is equal to 24. Okay, remember what I said on the introduction, if you're given, uh, something of this nature, that there is three to the exponent of X. And we also have another three to the exponent of X like this. But it, what we have here, it's combined. It's a combination of two terms. So I said, you can separate this as three to the exponent of X minus three to the exponent of X times three to the exponent of minus two. All right, or we can write as three to the exponent of x over if we are subtracting. Remember, we were dividing, we meaning to say we're dividing by what? Three to the exponent of two. That is what we know there. Or we can just have it as a multiplication like this. This is equal to what? To 24. Why are we doing this? So that we can properly see, by doing this, you can properly see that these two terms are the same. All right, this one, I want to indicate this. Three to the exponent of x, and also three to the exponent of X. These are the ones that we wanted to properly separate and see them. And now we can see these terms. And this just like we are multiplying by one. So we can factor out this here because these are two, this one is a term. This one is also a term. So you can factor out the three to the exponent of X, which is common. What do you remain with here? Well, a one. What about here? Three to the exponent of minus two with a what? A negative. So that's one minus three to the exponent of what? Of minus two like this, which is equal to what? To a 24. So guys, on this part, we can even simplify on your calculator. This is a product. So just know the term, the number that you're obtaining here. What is the number that you're going to obtain? All right, so this is you and your calculator. I'm just going to show the part of the screen, the calculator here. Uh, that is, you're going to have one minus uh, three to the exponent of minus two. So this is three to the exponent of a minus two like this. And this is gonna give us eight over nine. So you're gonna multiply to eight over nine in this case, which is equal to what? To a 24. Take note, we still have this. So here we are multiplying. So how do you remove this? We divide by eight over nine both sides. So you're gonna divide by eight over uh, nine both sides. All right, so this is eight over nine like this. Uh, that means by dividing, we are having, or this will cancel, and we are remaining with three to the exponent of what? Of X. So three to the exponent of X is gonna be what? We divide these two. So that is what you're gonna have here. Uh, 24 divided to the answer that we had, uh, that is gonna be a 27. All right, so we have, remember the purpose, like I said from our introduction, all this, the purpose is to have a single term and a single term. Why? So that we can have them in the same base. Can we write 27 and 3 in the same base? 3, it's a prime number and it's in simplest form. So there's no way we're going to have this. We're just going to rewrite as it is. It's already in simplest form. But the 3 to the exponent, this one, the, the, the 27 is same as 3 to the exponent of a 3. We are back to the same basis. Remember, if the bases are the same, what is the word we consider if the bases are the same? This is three, this is three. Our bases here are the same. So it means our exponents must be the same. X must be equal to what? To three. So therefore, X must be equal to three. So this is the solution there. And we can even prove this solution uh, to see if this is actually the right solution. If we substitute the value of X, remember we said our X is what? Three. If we substitute X here on the left-hand side, wherever there is X, if we substitute X, uh, which is three, that's three to the exponent of three, uh, where there is X, it's gonna be three to the exponent of three, three minus two, that's minus one. 
3 to the exponent, uh, 3 minus 2, that's 1. 3 to the exponent of 3, remember that is uh, 27 minus 3, which is 24, which is exactly what we have here. So our x is truly uh, a 3. All right, so that was it on this one. Uh, we have got the same situation on number 2. Okay, let's consider question number 2. 3 to the exponent of x plus 1 is equal to 3 to the exponent of x plus 2 over 3. Okay, take note there's an addition there. Okay, the situation is not going to change for us. And what is that situation? There we are adding where there is a 3 to the exponent of x there. But there there's an addition. We separate. How? 3 to the exponent of x times 3 to the exponent of y is equal to 3 to the exponent of x plus 2 over 3. So as we can see that we, we, we have this, the, the, the 3 to the exponent of x is there. We have it. We have it here. But these are not on the same side of the equation. This is on the left-hand side, and this is found on the other side of the equation. Take note our equal sign where it is there. So how do we solve? We have to collect these terms with 3 to the exponent of x to one side of the equation. So you're going to transpose this to the other side. So that means the, on the, on the left-hand side, we are remaining with this part as it is. 3 to the exponent of x times 3 to the exponent of 1, which is same as what? Which is same as 3. All right, this is just same as 3. Minus, we have taken this, it was a plus. So the moment it crosses the equal sign, it, it carries a negative, right? It becomes a negative. This is just a single term, it's just a constant. So you leave it like that, is equal to 2 over 3. Just leave it like that. We are now back to the same situation, just like the previous case. What is the condition or what is the situation where we can properly see that the 3 to the exponent of x and the 3 to the exponent of x are the same and they are on the same side of the equation. Take note the equal sign where it is there. They are on the same side of the equation. So we can do our factorization. By factorizing 3 to the exponent of x, we remain with what here? We remain with a 1. If we divide 3 to the exponent of x and 3 to the exponent of x here, uh, so here we're going to remain with a 3, all right? Sorry, this here, guys, is a 3. So that's a 3 minus here. If we divide this term and this term, we get a 1, all right? It's like there, it's a 1, there's like a 1. So there's a 1 already. So if we remove this, we remain with, we remain with a 1. So this is equal to 2 over 2 over 3. Now we can simplify just like the previous case, all right? We're going to simplify 3 to the exponent of x times 3 minus 2. Uh, 3 minus 1 in this case, which is going to give us what? That is a 2. And this is equal to 2 over 3. We have subtracted this, all right? Which is a 2. So you're going to divide. Since we are multiplying, this 2 is not affecting. It is, it, it is not carrying x. It, it, it does not have the x. The x is on 3. This is not affected, so we're going to divide by this. We divide by this. We remain with what? 3 to the exponent of x. So 3 to the exponent of x is equal to we divide. Remember, this was our numerator previously, this 2 over 3. So that is a single term, a single number that we have. That is going to be divided to this 2. So you can even use your calculator there. Uh, just open a bracket uh, to indicate uh, this simplification, just going to open a bracket there. All right, let me show you what I'm trying to say. Uh, so this is it here. When I have uh, our bracket for 2 over 3, that's 2 over a 3. All right, let's just save a bracket first. Open a bracket. Uh, 2 over 3, like this. Uh, you're going to close the bracket. Then we divide by this 2. So it's over this 2, like this. So this is going to give us 1 over 1 over 3. So this is 1 over 1 over 3. All right, so this is what you're going to have. Uh, we obtained 1 over 3 on this side. So this is 1 over 3. So now we have a single term, and this is a single term. Truly, it's a single term. But can we write this a fraction as a number to the exponent of a certain 3 to the exponent of? Yes, it's possible. Remember, x to the exponent of minus 1 is the one that gave us 1 over x. So 1 over 3 was taken from where? A vice versa. It was taken from x to the exponent of minus 1. 3 to the exponent of what? Of minus 1. So this is 3 to the exponent of x, the inverse. Remember where it was taken from? 3 to the exponent of minus 1. All right? So the bases are the same. 
the bases are the same. So x must be equal to what? x must be equal to 3. So therefore, x is equal to, sorry, x must be equal to, 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 to minus 1. So therefore, x in this case is equal to what? A negative 1. That is the condition. Like I said, you can even prove your question. You take your x on the left-hand side uh, and see if it's going to give you what is on the right-hand side. Remember, we said our x is what? Negative 1. So let us just prove it this way. If our x is negative 1, all right, if x is negative 1, if x is equal to minus 1, let us work with the left-hand side, all right? So this is our left-hand side, this one. It is 3 to the exponent of what? Minus x is minus 1. So it's minus 1 plus a 1, which is a 0, which is gives us at a 1. All right, let's prove from the right-hand side. From the right-hand side, remember I said x is minus 1. So this is going to be a minus 1 here, all right? This is a minus 1. And 3 to the exponent of minus 1 plus 2 over 3. We can even do this on our calculator and uh, see what you're going to have. Uh, that is, uh, let me show you the part of the screen again. 3 to the exponent of minus 1. So this is it. Uh, 3 to the exponent of minus 1 like that, all right? Plus 2 over 3. Plus uh, 2 over a 3 like this. All right, so what are we going to have? A 1 which is exactly what we got from the other side. We are getting what? A one. So this is the true value of X. So I want you to do the proof in each and every question that we're going to do. Make sure that you prove and see if your questions are exactly the same. So I'm not going to answer all of these questions. No, I'm just going to pick one of two. Uh, number three, let's see number three. Uh, 3 to the exponent of X plus 3 to the exponent of X plus 2 is equal to 10. All right, just like the previous case that we had, we're going to separate this part. So this is 3 to the exponent of x plus 3 to the exponent of x times 3 to the exponent of 2, which is equal to 10. The 3 to the exponent of x, the 3 to the exponent of x is common. Just like the previous case, we factor it out. So there is like there is a 1, the number that is multiplying there, it's a 1. So it's 1 plus, we factor out this, we divide it to this, we remain with what? 3 to the exponent of 3 to the exponent of 2 is equal to a 10. So this is what we have here. We simplify 3 to the exponent of x times. From our calculator, we simplify this, or you can even see by side, 3 to the exponent of 2 is 9. 9 plus 1, it's a 10. So this is a 10 is equal to a 10. How do you simplify from there? I said at this stage, you are going to remove this by dividing because it is, it is not having x. So we divide by 10. 3 to the exponent of x is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to 1. So at that stage, now you consider to say, can I write 1 as a number of 3, as, as, as a base of 3 to a certain exponent? Remember, any number when being raised to the exponent of 0, it gives us a 1. So 3 to the x, as we want to focus with 3. So this is the same one can be taken to the base of three. It's very, very possible, but being raised to the exponent of what? Of a zero. Three to the exponent of a zero is one. What we just need is to have same bases, the base of three and the base of three. Why? So that we can equate our exponents. Therefore, X is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to zero. That is the condition of our question. So I want you to also prove, just like I said, uh, you're going to take this value, you substitute and do the same thing. So this is what you're going to do on question number four, on question number five, on question number six, all these questions. Let's see question number five. On question number five, there's something there that is uh, just different uh, from the other questions because if you consider this is two to the exponent of x plus, two to the exponent of x plus, two to the exponent of x, which is equal to 96. This is the same throughout. So you're simply like, there's a one here, there's a one here, there's a one here. So if we factor out, we can even add, but if you, you do the factorization concept, you factor out here, you remain with a one plus a one plus a one in this case. There's a one here, there's a one, there's a one, which is equal to 96. So that's two to the exponent of X is equal to one plus one plus one. All right, so you're gonna multiply, sorry, times, if we add this, it's gonna give us what? A three, which is equal to 96. All right, divide by three, both sides, divide by three, both sides, since you're multiplying, uh, two to the exponent of X is equal to what? 32. So if we divide this, you're gonna get a 32 uh, on your calculator. Now that we have this, a single term and a single term, is it possible for us to write 32 as a number of two? It's possible. 
That's 2 to the exponent of x is equal to 2 to the exponent of what? 5. If you multiply 2 times 2 times 5 times, you're going to get a 32. The bases are the same. What does it mean? It means the exponents must be the same. Therefore, x is equal to 5. Just like that. Just like that. So this is um, what I'm going to expect you guys to do. Your questions, the same thing on number six is, as you can see, it's a continuation. I mean, it's a, it's a repetition on number six. They're just repeating the same thing. You just add, this is one, this is one. You just factor out 12 to the exponent of x, you divide, you, you look for the same base. But uh, on number seven, uh, it's just a little bit different. It's you're back to that same condition of question number one, question two, if we check on number seven there. Uh, but let us just do it. Uh, number seven. Uh, 2 to the exponent of x plus 2 to the exponent of x minus 2 is equal to 5. So just like this previous case, we said we're going to separate this. So how do we separate? We multiply 2 to the exponent of x times 2 to the exponent of my. You maintain the same base of 2, but separating these exponents x and what? And minus 2 in the same base of 2. This must be equal to what? A 5. The moment we have this, we are back to the common terms that we can see. Uh, that is 2 to the exponent of x, 2 to the exponent of x. So that we do not have a confusion. Here we're just multiplying like this. Hey, there's a 1 there. So that when you factor out the 2 to the exponent of x, which is common, you properly see what is remaining here is what? You're going to remain with a 1. Plus, what are you going to remain with here? You're going to remain with 2 to the exponent of what? minus 2, that's 2 to the exponent of minus 2 is equal to 5. That's it. You factored out the common term. But the whole of this part here can be simplified to be a single number also. So that's 2 to the exponent of x times. What are we going to have here? Our calculator again uh, for our simplification. If you are not sure about your uh, mathematical calculations, the calculator is there as an assistance. So this is it here. 1 plus 2 to the exponent of a negative 2, like this. So this is going to give us 5 over 4. So that's times 5 over 4 is equal to 5. So how do we simplify further? I said from this, we divide by what is multiplying 5 over 4. So if we divide by 5 over 4 both sides, we divide by 5 over 4. Remember, this is a single term, so it cancels. We remain with what? We remain with? 2 to the exponent of x, which is equal to, we divide 5, divided to the 5 over 4, which is the answer that we got previously, this one. So it's just 5 divided to the answer that we got previously, we get what? A 4. So that's a 4 in this case. We are now back because we have a single term and a single term. So 2 to the exponent of x, 4, written in the base of 2, represents what? 2 to the exponent of a 2. The bases are the same. So therefore, x is equal to what? x must be equal to 2. Just like that. All right? So as we can see, it's a repetition. Uh, but number 8 is totally different. Number 8, what do we have? Okay, number 8, we've got 2 to the exponent of 2x plus a 4 to the exponent of x plus 1, uh, which is equal to 80. All right, if you were to separate, yes, you can, you can do that. To say, okay, this is 2 to the exponent of 2x plus 4. Remember, we said you're going to separate x plus 1 means we've got two terms there in the base of what? In the base of 4. 4 to the exponent of x times 4 to the exponent of 1 is equal to 80. But we can't factorize because this term and this term, they are different. But if we check properly, remember 4 can be written in the base of 2, and 4 is same as 2 to the exponent of 2. So it means in place of this 4 that is affecting x, we want to write it in terms of 2. That is 2 to the exponent of 2. So we're going to have this as 2 to the exponent of 2x plus, remember in place of 4, this one, it's 2 to the exponent of 2. But being raised to the exponent of what? To the exponent of x, which is originally there, this one. So that will be exponent and exponent. Remember, an exponent, exponent, you multiply 2 times x, you get what? 2 to the exponent of 2x. So this here, the 4 that we are seeing here, is the same as what? As 2 to the exponent of what? Of 2x. 
There's no need for us to simplify the four. Just leave it like that. There's no need for us to simplify there. We do not have X. Just leave it like that. This, like we are multiplying by one. Like I said, uh, any number is, you are multiplying by one. So it's just like one times. So that when you factorize what is common or when you factor out the common term, uh, which is in this case, the two to the exponent of X that we are seeing here, which is the same as the two to the exponent of X that we are seeing here, we can properly see what is remaining on our question. We factor out two to the exponent of X. We remain with what here? We remain with a one. Plus, you factor out this, what you remain with, you remain with a 4. So that is it, which is going to give us 80. Uh, then uh, here, I'm going to simplify further. Uh, 2 to the exponent of x times 1 plus 4, which is a 5. So that's 5 is equal to 80. If we divide by 5, because we are multiplying here, we're going to divide by 5 both sides by 5 both sides. Uh, that's 80 divided by 5, which is something like what, 16. Uh, that's 2 to the exponent of x is equal to 16. Divide properly on your calculator. That's going to give you a 16. We have a single term. We are back now. Single term and single term. Can, can 16 be written in the base of 2? Is it possible? If it's possible, write it in the base of 2. So it means 2 to the exponent of x is possible to have 16 in the base of 2. That's 2 to the exponent of a 4. So you're supposed to know your exponents. Before you talk about the exponential equations, revise your exponents. So the bases, if they are the same, it means the exponents are the same. So therefore, our x is going to be equal to what? To 4, just like that. So you can even test your values and see if what you have on the left-hand side, if we substitute, remember we said our x is what? Let us just see. x is um, 4. So if we take our x to be 4 here, we substitute a 4. That is 2 to the exponent of 2 times a 4, which is 8, plus 4 to the exponent. Remember, x is what? It's 4. So that is going to be 4 plus a 1. That is what we, that is what we are given. There. That is what we have in this condition. All right? Is it, is it exactly? Let me divide here, guys. You see this issue of not using a calculator. 80 divided by... 5, like this. This is 16, all right? And uh, 2 to the exponent of x is equal to 2 to the exponent of what? A 4, all right? So x is, uh, all right, that, that is a 2x here, guys. I'm, I'm surprised why. Okay, let's correct this, guys, because I'm seeing that the proof there is not working. You see, the advantage of proving this is 2x. So can we just correct this part? This is 2 to the exponent of 2x to the exponent of 2x. So guys, very so let us just have a correction there. All right. I was wondering why is these values now different? You see this guy, these things, guys. All right. So let us just correct there. So this here is we are factoring out. So these are just corrections there. We are factoring out 2 to the exponent of 2x to the exponent of 2x as it is, not x. This is 2x. So this part remains as it is. Remember, we got 1 plus 4 is equal to 80. Uh, we got a 5 here, 2 to the exponent. So this is 2x here times a 5 is equal to 80 divided by a 5 by a 5. So 2 to the exponent of 2x is equal to here. We're going to get what? Uh, 16, like what we saw. So take note. In the best of 2, 2 to the exponent of 2x is equal to 16. In the base of 2, we said it's 2 to the exponent of 4. So the bases are the same. It means 2x must be equal to 4. 2x must be equal to 4. So what is the value of x? We divide by 2. We divide by 2. So x here is going to give us what? x is going to give us a 2. So you see the, the advantage of proving your answers. This is what I was explaining, that please make sure that uh, you do prove your answers. It helps you to check well uh, if the answer is correct. So that means here our x is a 2. Remember we said x is a 2. So this is going to be, uh, if we put a 2 here, 2 times 2, that's a 4. 2 to the exponent of 4 plus a 2 here, 2 plus 1, that's 3, 4 to the exponent of 3. All right. So that is, uh, we can even use our calculator and see if we are going to obtain uh, 80. All right. Let's see. 
2 to the exponent of a 4, like this. All right, then we move this aside, plus 4 to the exponent of a 3, like this. Uh, that is going to give us, what, 80, which is the same as this 80 that we are seeing. So this is true. The value of x that we are obtaining, which is a true, uh, which is a, a two in this case, is what is true. So guys, be very careful when dealing with equations. Uh, be very, very careful how you simplify, how you solve for x. How are you going to solve for x? You need to have a single term equated to a single term on the other hand, so that you can use this concept. It's, it only works if there are two terms, a to the exponent of m to be equal to a to the exponent of n, if these two are truly the same, it means therefore m automatically must be equal to n. It's only if you're considering from two terms, this term and this term. That's why we need to have two terms, one on the left and the other one on the right. So this whole simplification is for us to achieve this format. Once we have this, we can equate our exponents. So we shall see more questions of this typical nature from Medzone African Motives till we meet again.